So you realize you need some dust collection in your shop. Can you use your shop vac, one of these babies? Can you use that for dust collection in your shop? We're gonna tell you what you really need to know to make the best use of your shop vac in your shop and how to use it for dust collection, where it works and maybe where it doesn't work. So let's get to it. If you like what you see today, make sure you hit the thumb, smash that thumb to let us know that the content we bring you is of value, that you enjoy it. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. That way you're notified each week of all the content we bring you. Hey, welcome back to the Woodcrafting Place. We bring you woodworking knowledge each week so that you can enjoy your time in the shop a little more, make it more efficient, more effective. So we're gonna go through the considerations for using the shop vac, that's right, yes. So I'll get to the punchline. Yes, of course you can use your shop vac for dust collection in your shop when you use it correctly. All right, so first there's some basics that we need to cover so that you understand uh, the basics of airflow for your dust collection solution. These are velocity, volume, and pressure, okay? Start with velocity. This is the characteristic of basically how fast the air flows. Velocity, you need enough velocity that'll keep the wood chips moving through the piping. Air handling experts have pretty much determined that between 3,500, 4,000 feet per minute is the ideal speed. You don't want the air flow to fall below that. When it falls below that, will fall out of the airstream and get stuck and they'll pile up. And the shop vac does a pretty good job of reaching those speeds, at least at the inlet. So next is pressure. Pressure is, a lot of people refer to this as suction, right? You put your shop vac, you turn it on, you feel the end, the thing is sucking like crazy. Well, that's because there's a good amount of pressure on our shop vac and our piece of paper. And you'll notice that it's got to be pretty close, there we go, before the shop vac affects a piece of paper. So good pressure when you get close enough it has a challenge, and that's volume, right? As mentioned, volume is an important characteristic along with the other two. It's simply stated the amount of air that flows through the vacuum system at a certain rate. So in this case, it's cubic feet per minute, right? That's Typical shop vac is about 150 CFM. And here's where the challenge comes in. If you look at the chart on your screen right now, you'll see that most shop tools require quite a bit more. Game over, man, it's game over. But our solutions will help you understand how you overcome that. Dust control design elements is three key elements, especially for a shop vac because of that volume thing we talked about. The three elements that you need to design in are containment, isolation, and channeling. Containment, this is the first and a key step to dealing with dust in a shop vac. So around any power equipment, especially that, high, that are working at a higher speed, they will throw chips, they throw it far. And if you don't have a way to stop the chip from flying, a physical barrier, they'll fly off. So that's the first design element. Isolation, this especially the small, very fine dust, called respirable dust, is highly affected by the shop air, movements in the shop air. So you need to have a way to break up that positive airflow so the wood chips don't get blown off all over the shop and get into the ambient air and just kind of float off. And last is channeling. What channeling is, is if you, when you build in your solution, you incorporate a way for the dust to actually channel and move as it's being expelled from the machine towards the shop vac inlet. I want to give you one more note on central plumbing of a dust collection system. So when you plumb 
any system, whether it be a small shop vac, dust vac, or a main dust collection system, through a series of plumbing, you incur friction. As you increase the friction, your airflow goes down, your cubic feet per minute goes down. And you go lower and lower until you have to drop the suction inlet where the chips are being picked up to such a small size that you're just not affecting much area at all. And of course, some machines will lend themselves to this better than others, right? Take a look at my drill press here. So you can see the drill press, I've got all of this area for machining that's gonna go everywhere, it's gonna fly. So I have this nice little engineered hood, okay? Nothing more than the clear plastic flex hose, which simply goes over here and snaps on. And we, we, the best way to use it for this one is here. And this, being nice and flexible, gives us the latitude to do the work that we want. And you can see here, so this can move to cover whatever I want. Drilling without dust collection is our starting point. Using a FOSS nibbit just to create the maximum mess. Now we're gonna put on our dust hood. And then this end is a wood ring with three magnets, right, to hold it in place. So we just loop it around. Well, same fastener bit. Now you can line up your drill and then pull this down to make it work. We're not worried about where, so we're just gonna pull that down there. And then we got a clear shot as we do. No chips. This is how you use your shop vac. Point of use, controlled, contained, channeling the dust. Okay, so another tool that lends itself to uh, dust collection using the shop vac is the sander here. How the hood works, simply this bar rotates in there. I'm using white plastic for demonstration. Dust clouds. Okay. I'm still getting some chips that go a little bit over here. All right, so the router table is one of those tables that uh, multiple dust collection spots. For anyone that's used a router before, you know that they produce chips crazy fast. This came with a factory dust pickup on the back. And I found that, you can see here, I have it plugged up with a towel, right? Effective. It wasn't that good at getting the chips out the back, even with this nifty plastic hood. The chips would just swirl around and because this is propped up a little bit as the wood goes through it, I found that the chips just ejected. A little modification to take my dust collection through the top. And the other key important element is this box right here. Install the collection box underneath the router because no matter how hard I tried with zero clearance inserts under there, pull chips through. So now I'm collecting sawdust from the top, from the side. Uh, 
as I mentioned, the other element. And again, I'm gonna remind you, bang it to your friend when it comes to dust collection. The door is held closed, you can see here, by a magnet on either side. Slaps closed, easy access. All right, let's go take a quick look at the table saw. For those of you who have an old craftsman style table saw of this nature, one of the hardest things to do is the back. These are wide open back and it, it, it was a real challenge to figure, come up with a way to keep the, the sawdust under control with that wide open. This would constantly get covered in sawdust. So I took a, some rubber matting I had that's actually mat from a drafting table left over from my drafting days. Cut in the strips, mounted a wood strip across the back of it so that it keeps it contained. Okay, this is one of those tools that's more suited for using this shop back as a supplemental dust collection. You can hook your shop back up right here and down below. Pretty much nothing on top of the saw. Nice and clean. Beautiful job containing the sawdust inside. Okay, one element that I wanna go over, which was impossible to see in the um, table saw, was as I mentioned, remember the three things that elements in dust collection you need to contain, isolate, and channel. Inside the table saw, I've built this cover over the carriage that you can see. This is a carriage from an old table saw I bought for parts. What this does, this entire side of the saw blade is completely open the way it comes from the factory. And the wood chips fly everywhere. So I, in this case, I use plexiglass, anything will work. I use a bracket bolted on, you can see here, and that's for the uh, blade guard, which bolt, can bolt right over that, back over that. And then just a hook, diagram it out, cut it to size. What this will do is as it cuts, it throws the chips, and the chips get thrown directly out the bottom. And you can see here, the stake of shooting out the bottom. And from there, they get launched directly into the intake hood, which I bolted to the bottom of the saw. We'll take a look at that now. The wood chips are directed from the saw blade as the saw blade comes and shoots the chips down. They go down directly into that hole. And at the other side of that hole is the shot back. Hey, one note about the uh, fittings for uh, Connecting up your shop back hose to a four inch dust port for any place that you might need to. There's two different size fittings. As you can see here, one fits over the other. This particular fitting is slightly smaller. It's actually the exact same size as dust ports and um, glass gates. So you would need something a sleeve that this goes into and also goes over the dust port. This particular fitting would actually go right over the dust port for the blast gate. So just recognize which it is that you need for whatever it is you're looking to do, okay? So, and don't forget down below, you'll find the affiliate links and some links to where you find all these pieces and parts. That way you know what fittings you'll need for your project. So, um, so the final guidance, these are things you want to keep in mind. These are going to make your use of this, of this shop vac more effective, right? First and most important, make sure you have a good quality filter that's clean, keep it clean. 
Sham facts should be connected to one tool at a time only. By trying to hook it up as a central dust collection unit, you really just kill the airflow. And what you get at any one particular tool isn't enough to do the job that you want it to. You saw at the table saw, I've got two dust, two shop vacs collecting dust. So that gets me up to like 300 cubic feet per minute. So I've taken a big step forward to collecting dust from the table saw. Hood design, this is really critical in the solution that we talked about is the hood has to contain the dust and stop it. And lastly, investigate ways to reduce the noise from the shop vac. The shop vac as it comes from the factory, a lot of them are 95 decibels and some probably higher. That's loud. That's like having a lawnmower in your wood shop. I got a question of the day, which is actually I'm looking for your help. Listen carefully. My next video is about improving the dust collection from that bandsaw that you see right over my shoulder. Bandsaw is notorious for being difficult for dust collection. The, uh, what you can see right there, the dust collection port that comes from the factory is all but pretty useless. From what I can see, it doesn't do much, except make this loud whining, whistling noise because there's a really tight restriction in it. So leave me a note down below on the creative ideas that you have for doing dust collection in the bandsaw. Now I have got some of my own ideas already, but I'd love to hear your ideas. And of course, send me a picture if you happen to have one of what you did. And if I do use some of your ideas, you'll get the credit. Love to hear your solutions, your ideas. Leave them down below. So if you liked what you saw today, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. That way you get notified each week of all the content that we bring you. So it's been a pleasure sharing my dust collection solutions with you today. Hope you found them of use and you can help inspire you to put some good practices in place and knock the dust down because the only good dust is no dust, right? All right, so look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, you have yourself a great day.